And my second talk was on ranolazine, a medication used to treat angina, people with heart pain. And uh, in clinical trials that had been carried out before with that agent, there had been some lowering of hemoglobin A1C. So it looked like it may have a benefit in patients with diabetes. So my task there was uh, kind of uh, in one of the uh, selected papers from Diabetes Care to present data on ranolazine as monotherapy in patients with diabetes or as a combination with glimepiride, a sulfonylurea, or in combination with metformin, a commonly used drug to treat type 2 diabetes. And the bottom line there, ranolazine works alone to lower A1C by 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6%. Ranolazine works on top of glimepiride with about a 0.5% lowering of A1C. And with metformin, there was no benefit. And, And the reason for that, we think in part relates to the reduction in metformin dose that was necessary in the ranolazine group because of the effect of ranolazine on metformin metabolism. In other words, metformin levels are higher, so the dose of metformin was reduced uh, to accommodate the drug-drug interaction. And the thought there is the lack of benefit was due to the fact that the metformin dose wasn't adequate. So the trial simply looked at three options alone or with glimepiride or with metformin, and again, two, two of those three worked. And the idea here is not necessarily to, to think ranolazine is going to be a, another drug to treat diabetes with. It's just in people with angina who, who take the drug, it, it would appear to be maybe a reasonable choice if they have diabetes, maybe they, to use that drug for both combinations for angina. But, you know, the FDA, you know, uh, I'm not sure what the company's going to do with this. This was an interesting study. Gilead. Uh, science has supported the study, but we weren't part of the study. So myself, Jay Schuyler from Miami, and Bob Henry from uh, San Diego, were, we, we teamed up on the science without any remuneration. We weren't paid for this. We just thought the data needed to be published, and Gilead wanted our assistance in bringing the data forward. So no safety concerns at all. I mean, the usual side effects of ranolazine are modest, and they were in all three uh, components of the trial. No, minimal hypoglycemia, but nothing serious, so really nothing to worry about there. Well, lipid devices are only really utilized in extreme cases where LDL can't be adequately lowered because of statin intolerance or uh, genetic diseases that put the LDL cholesterol very high. And their devices are LDL-A phoresis, which is a way to mechanically remove the bad cholesterol out of the bloodstream. That's a rare patient, but we have 23 being done in Denver right now. Uh, now, devices and diabetes, I mean, the question is, is uh, pump therapy, glucose monitoring, all these kinds of things we're doing going to be beneficial? I think so as it relates to A1C lowering. And, you know, not all studies have shown that, but many have. The use of a sensor and or a pump may be better than having neither. Uh, so outcome studies for cardiovascular disease clearly are not before us and nor going to likely happen in the near future with those kinds of inquiries. But, you know, um, the artificial pancreas, where there's an intrinsic control system between glucose and insulin delivery, is another question. Because there, I think we can control diabetes as if the disease wasn't present, if everything is optimal in terms of how it functions.